Hello everyone. Today I am going to discuss about the dependence of Fermi level in case of extrinsic semiconductor. That is on what all factors the Fermi level is going to depend is the topic for today's session. So mainly we are going to discuss two dependence. That is first one is with respect to temperature how the Fermi level is going to change and the second one is with respect to change in impurity concentration which is nothing but dopant concentration how the fermi level is going to change we are going to study today so let's start one by one first we are going to discuss the temperature dependence on fermi level that is what happens at low temperature and as the temperature goes on increasing how the fermi level is going to change let us see so for n type semiconductors we know that the majority charge carriers are the electrons that is the donors because of the dopants added which are pentavalent impurities and when we have n type semiconductor we know that the impurity level lies just below the conduction band that is if you plot a energy level diagram we have a valence band and conduction band with the energy ev and ec respectively and for n type semiconductor we are having a donor level which will lie just below the conduction band and at low temperature the donor stick on in the donor level itself and that's why the fermi level near to the donor level is something like this that is at low temperature what will happen we have already discussed while explaining about the extrinsic carrier concentration that is the donor electrons or the electrons will be sticking on to the atoms itself that we studied under freeze out range that's why as this donors are going to stick on to the atoms itself the donors will be present in the donor level itself and that's why it is having the fermi level just intermediate between that of a donor level and conduction band and as the temperature goes on increasing the donors present in the donor level they will just ionize into the conduction band and that's why there will be lowering of energy of the donor level that is energy is going on decreasing that is fermi energy because of increase in temperature the donor atoms which are present in the donor level the electrons are going to ionize into the conduction band so that the total energy of the donor level is going to decrease and it will be moving towards the valence band the nature is evident in the diagram itself that is energy level diagram and till how much it is going to go down towards the valence band is the question if you go on increasing the temperature further finally at high temperature you can observe that it is going to act as intrinsic we need to know that it is going to decrease means n type is not going to become p type but at high temperature it is going to act like a intrinsic semiconductor because in intrinsic semiconductor we know that what all contribution is there for the conduction is coming from the valence band itself that is electrons from valence band are transited to the conduction band which is going to increase the charge carriers and that's why as you go on increasing the temperature at higher temperature all the donor atoms which are present in the donor level the electrons will be already ionized and later on it is going to saturate because the contribution is coming from the valence band electrons and for intrinsic nature we know that the fermi energy lies at the center of energy gap that's why we can observe this type of nature of the fermi energy with respect to low temperature up to high temperature in case of n type semiconductor so next let us see how it is going to differ in case of p type semiconductor 
So similarly in p-type semiconductors we know that the majority charge carriers are holes which forms the acceptor level and we know that the acceptor level is lying just above the valence band where it is consisting of a number of holes. Now let us see what happens with respect to change in temperature. Again we know that at low temperatures all the holes that is due to the trivalent impurity added which is going to make an intrinsic semiconductor P type these holes will be bound to their sites itself means they are bound to the acceptor atom itself it is not just free to move and because of which we know for such kind of nature we have the Fermi level intermediate between that of the valence band and the acceptor level that's why for low temperature the energy that is Fermi energy is going to lie in between that of Ev and Ea and as the temperature is going on increasing the holes goes on decreasing that is the number of holes are going to decrease in the acceptor level because when the temperature is increasing the electrons from the valence band they just get excited or ionized into the acceptor level because holes are present and finally because of this the energy of the system is going to increase which means that there will be increase in the Fermi level itself and that's why when you again increase the temperature when all the acceptor atoms are occupied or the holes occupied by the electrons of the valence band finally the semiconductor is going to act like an intrinsic semiconductor because there is no extra acceptor electron uh, acceptor hole that's why we can observe this type of nature which is similar to n type but in order to explain for p type we need to remember what is the fermi level at low temperature and what happens as the temperature is going on increasing so finally it is going to act like an intrinsic semiconductor because again the conductivity is going to be decided by the electron which is present in the valence band and its transition to the conduction band and we know that for intrinsic semiconductor the Fermi level lies almost at the center of energy gap. So this is the nature of Fermi level or Fermi energy in case of p-type semiconductor depending on change in temperature. So this is about the temperature dependence on Fermi level in case of extrinsic semiconductor. So the next parameter which is going to decide the location of the Fermi level is impurity concentration and we know that if we need to get a extrinsic semiconductor means we need to just add the impurities into the intrinsic semiconductor itself and for intrinsic semiconductor we know that the Fermi level or Fermi energy is lying at the center or middle of the energy gap that is at Eg by 2. So if you consider the energy level diagram representing Ev as the energy of valence band and Ec as the energy of the conduction band, we have the intrinsic energy we say as Ei which is lying at the center of or middle of energy gap. We know energy gap is nothing but the minimum energy dif difference between the top of the valence band and bottom of the conduction band. So we can observe the Fermi energy of intrinsic semiconductor located at Eg by 2 that is middle of Eg. So when you add pentavalent impurities into the intrinsic semiconductor what is going to happen? This Fermi energy will shift towards the conduction band because initially it is acting as intrinsic 
means the fermi energy will be at the center but as you go on adding the pentavalent impurities more and more donor electrons will be present due to which the fermi energy is going to shift towards the conduction band and finally at higher concentration it is going to saturate because we know for n type semiconductor the donor level is just below the conduction band whereas the fermi level is intermediate between the conduction band and the donor level so in brief if we add the pentavalent impurities to an intrinsic semiconductor then the fermi level is going to shift towards the conduction band as the number of donors are increased and then it is going to saturate as shown in this diagram so this is the dependence of impurity concentration when you add pentavalent impurity in intrinsic semiconductor which is going to give you n type semiconductor but what about another type of extrinsic semiconductor again we are going to consider the intrinsic semiconductor and when we add the trivalent impurities then we are going to get p type semiconductor which we already know again drawing the energy level diagram for p type semiconductor we know that the acceptor level is going to lie just above the valence band and the nature of the impurity dependence that is trivalent impurity dependence is as shown so this is the nature of fermi energy that is as the impurity concentration is going on increasing the fermi energy is going to shift towards the valence band because more number of acceptors will be becoming more and more in the semiconductor that's why it is going to act like p type because it is going to be p type semiconductor finally the fermi energy is going to be saturated and the location is in between that of the acceptor level and the valence band so just to brief out if you consider an intrinsic semiconductor and trivalent impurities let let us say like aluminum or gallium etc are added then the number of holes that is due to the impurity added not intrinsic the number of holes due to the impurity added are going to increase so as a result the fermi level will slide down towards the valence band and at a very high concentration or addition of acceptor impurities fermi level is almost saturated above the valence band which is seen in this energy level diagram so in this manner we can just explain how your fermi energy is going to change with respect to high temperature or low temperature and what is going to happen there and also how the fermi level is going to change with respect to the type of impurity added and with increase in the concentration of impurity added what is the nature of fermi energy both in n type as well as p type we have just studied so this is another important topic which we need to understand that is dependence of fermi energy with respect to temperature as well as impurity concentration so this is about today's session thank you